Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As I talk about today's video, we're here to talk all things playmaking in NBA 2K24. So, in today's video, I have segmented, as we did with the finishing, defense, and shooting, if you guys want to check that out, same with even the takeover, all of these different tweets from Mike Wang or anybody else that was worth putting all these notes into here for, into a separate folder that's only for dribbling and passing news. Not to mention, we'll talk about some of the stuff on the courtside report that pertains to playmaking as well between the new badges like Speed Booster, etc, etc, or even the big man speed boosting badge as well. So we'll get to all that stuff if you haven't already seen it. But what I wanted to do mainly with today's video is give you guys my input on a lot of the news that has to do with stuff like this and mainly this top one right here. And as you probably see by the title of today's video, I think playmaking is going to have a huge skill gap in this year's game. And Main tweet being this right here. Have the RBLV passes been reworked at all? I feel it's a big issue holding back actual offense. Just rebounds and chuck it up court. Completely agree with this guy. Shout out to him. He also follows me too. So that's how you know he's a smart little fella right there. But anyway, shout out to Benny for the really W tweet. I didn't even know he followed me before checking that. But anyway, RBLB is gone for 2K24. You have to actually use a little IQ for long outlet passes this year. And I would actually argue it does take a little bit more than a little. So obviously, let's say like Comp Pro-Am, people are yelling out their icons all the time on the fast break, right? So that's a little bit more of a given, but also just because you say it doesn't mean A, the mic delay is gonna pick it up quick enough, and B, doesn't mean the person is gonna like hear you or react to it in time, which is kind of the same thing as A, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. I really do think that when it comes to Comp Pro-Am, this is still gonna hinder some people and really make it so you have to really think these things out in the moment and put a little bit of pressure on the bigs to actually make the right pass rather than just hit right bumper left bumper boom throw to the deepest guy who's clearly out on the break and is routing up in the perfect way you got to know what icon to throw and i gotta say this is going to be a huge huge thing for rec center as well i think this is a good thing for rec though personally i know it makes it a little bit harder on you if you're someone that plays with randoms and stuff like that or just in general even in the rec period because you're probably not going in with the exact same five every time you play rec i hope not for the sake of the people watching this video anyway my point being with that is obviously it's going to be a little bit of a slower response time from those bigs to throw those outlets which does mean a lot of good things for the fast break defense as far as the defensive side of things when it comes to wreck and i don't like that it was as simple as that like if someone's out on the break i understand like the real life aspect of it of like yeah just chuck it down there it doesn't have to be that accurate but from a game perspective it's very nice to know that it's not going to be the most simple easy thing for someone to do just click the right on their on their pointer finger and then the left on their pointer finger and just boom it's it's down there i, I do like that for the sake of the iq factor and the reactionary part and the passing skill gap of bigs in this year's game so i'm a, I'm a big fan of that for sure moving along we have PB and J right here. Will there be cool park size ups like in 2K21? So this tweet I was really intrigued by because it, it doesn't really seem very controllable. Now this is where I'm gonna con you know contradict what I said about the whole skill gap playmaking thing. So Mike says no park size ups per se, but there are some really new co new cool park specific dribble moves that happen out of body ups like nutmegs and other M1 type moves. So here's my thing. When he says out of body ups, I have a fear that this is going to be talking about like, you know, when you get bumped, it's going to do some random dribble move for you because you're trying to, your player's trying to get out of it or something like that. I don't know if this gives the vibe that it's going to be a controller mechanic thing where like you can do it out of the bump. Like if let's say you're getting bumped and then you can just put it through his legs, simple as that, right? Like I don't think it's going to be like that with a certain like flick of the stick per se, if you know what I'm saying. I think it's gonna be more random and not exactly what you want. Now that's assumption, to be fair. It's not factual. I just, I've, I've seen things like that in the game before, man. Like that's what really like worries me about something like this. But we'll see factually when we get into the game a little bit more, probably within the first like couple of days, we'll know about stuff like that for a very good, like factual evidence sort of like vibe. But anyway, moving along to the next one. We have 2K Lab right here had to compare 23 versus 24. This is total playmaking animation. Shout out to them for putting this together. Very, very nice. And you'll see later in the video, like, or actually right here for that matter too. <laughs> we have a full list of all of the multitude of different animations that are gonna be in the game this year between motion styles and obviously things like dribble styles, behind the backs, step backs, crossover, hezzy, escape, combo packs, which is a new thing, and breakdown combos, which is also a new thing. And then 67 size ups and 30 spins. So we have, 2K Lab doing like the Lord's work right here for all of us, and that's how they usually always go about things. 
we have dribble styles. They have actually dropped one. You can see that's the only like certain animation of anything in the game between, you know, motion styles, combos of playmaking. We have passing styles too. They actually decrease the amount of dribble styles by one. So what I'm intrigued by is the idea of them maybe keeping all the exact same dribble styles, but putting more of a balance on the ratings. So for instance, let's say something like Michael Jordan dribble style demanding really, really high speed with ball. I think that's a great idea, but to not change or edit any of the dribble styles. I think this is one that could stay the same and should stay the same moving into the next year, just so you know the perfect gameplay balance for a lot of those things. Because once you set those animation caps for attribute caps that are required for them, there's no going back. You can't ever change those. You can't just change it on the community. People made their builds specifically for things like that. I'm sure I've never even seen them ever do something like that. So just keep that in mind for sure. The closest thing I've ever seen them do to something like that is when in 2K20, the good behind the back, they screwed it up where it was like people with below 87 ball handle got the good behind the back and people with above 87 got the bad one. My boy Kitchen was going crazy on his red green when that was the case because it was a broken build for that reason. But anyway, my point being is I hope they put MJ dribble style to something like 90 speed of ball, 95 speed of ball. Maybe they put John Morant into that next tier. Maybe they put pro or something like that into that next tier. Maybe they made a couple of them a little bit better. So it's not just MJ that everybody's fiending for. And maybe there's a couple that are along the way that are more, you know, moderately decent, but not super crazy or anything like that, like MJ would be. But regardless, I just wanted to say I think it's going to be a really good idea if that is the case and I have to assume considering they didn't add many that that was their intention. Besides that though we have passing styles they have been doubled from 7 to 14 so 7 new ones. That's going to be a big deal and he did say we'll get to that a little bit later in the video but he did say that they are going to be good like at least gave that indication or feeling pretty much. He said that you should try new ones out and you'll really see the difference pretty much in the way you pass. So. I'm intrigued by that. I think that's definitely gonna be something worth testing. Not to mention, I'm very intrigued to see what the passing thresholds are on stuff like that. And I'm also hopeful that once again, and this is hopeful because it's not really a thing that we get out of 2K very often, <laughs> is that they have tested all of these animations and made sure that ones that require high ratings are actually good and ones that are not as high of rating requirements aren't actually game breaking broken where once again, MJ dribble style, 75 speed of ball. It's like the worst thing you could possibly do when it comes to animations. I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it when they don't gameplay balance test things. And I believe in Wolf being on the team this year that they actually will pay attention to stuff like that in detail a lot more. I don't want to put pressure on him because I know a lot of people have been, but I'm very intrigued to see how that goes. Six size ups staying the same, nothing being added. Size up escapes, we added eight of them. So it's going from 18 to 26. Size up escapes, this is where I'm a little bit intrigued. We'll, we'll, we'll get to a thing of note in just a second. Keep in mind that I wanted to talk about size up escapes in a couple minutes in this video because I'm very intrigued uh, as far as that versus the moving step backs. So anyway, moving crossover, 28 crossovers up to 45, 17 added. Now to be fair, I think a lot of these are gonna be ones that were originally in like old 2Ks potentially, or maybe they did get new animations through pro play. I, obviously that's something that they did, yes, but I'm intrigued to see if any old ones come back because talking about behind the backs going from 15 to 31, doubling them entirely and getting up to 16 more. I want to see one like, I forget what he was in called. I think it was like Elite 3 back in the day or Elite, or Elite like 6 or something like that. It was the one that I ran on my athletic finisher in 2K17. That was the best behind the back I've ever seen in this game. And I also hope that's a high requirement. So I am very hopeful for the balancing of this game that we have some really well-balanced animation caps and I believe in it. I've been hearing some stuff. I don't want to leak too much because I, I mean, I didn't sign the NDA, but <laughs> I don't want to ruin anybody else's reputation. But I've been hearing some stuff about the animations and I'm not going to lie. It sounds like they're going to require a lot of high ratings. That's at least what I know so far. But anyway, moving forward, we have the moving step back 15 up to 18, only three more. But who knows if any of those are going to be good. Three is a pretty small sample size for something like that. So I don't know. It's not likely that there are going to be very like good. It's just the percentages, you know, but it is what it is. Moving spins, we have 17 to 30. So shout out to Steezo. He is going to be probably finding the sauce between stuff like this. Unless maybe basic one is still basic one. I'm going to be real with you guys. I hope they take that out of the game. Not for the sake of saying that it's a broken dribble move, but it's more so I hope they don't let people with 
20 ball control have it like i don't want to see people with the best spin in the game have it if they have 30 ball handle that's just kind of my take on it personally i think that or at least like i said maybe it's a higher rating requirement like at least 80 or something like that that's my personal take on it but i know there's some people out there that are a little bit biased in that sense they want the good dribble moves on their tall bigs i get it i understand but it's not good for games balance if you ask me anyway moving along Moving hezzies, as you can see, we have 12 to 27, uh, or yeah, and 15 more. That's a pretty useless dribble move in most situations for most people. So I don't expect to really see a lot of hoopla over that. But motion styles, we have these in the game now. We have talked about this in a previous video. It's more so for a defensive talk, if you really want to be real. But who knows, it might actually influence the way we move on offense to quite a bit. So I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to test a lot of these because boy, is there a ton of them. So. In typical 2K fashion, some of them have to be better at something than the other. So we'll be trying them out a lot. I'm sure 2K Labs will have something to say about the motion styles too. And we'll, we'll hear a lot of feedback from the community. I might even like host a poll on or like let you guys vouch for some motion styles you've been testing. And I'll give some of the most common ones out. Like give them, give them a try pretty much. But anyway, breakdown combos. We're going from 0 to 102. I'll talk about that in just a second. And then combo packs also was not in the game last year and up to 20 of them so we're going from 205 animations in total to 555 obviously a lot of that biased between the motion styles and breakdown combos but for the most part a lot of this stuff was still mixed in here and we got about i would say like what 60 on quick maths right there of new animations that aren't the motion styles breakdown combos or combo packs or anything like that but anyway moving along into the next part of the video sorry it was a little bit long but i wanted to talk about a lot of that stuff we have a question pertaining what will be the rating sweet spot for passing this year and mike says pretty subjective obviously that i mean that's pretty factual but pass accuracy's impact on the types slash speeds of your passes will be very similar to 2k23 try out different passing styles too they make a big difference this is what i was in reference to earlier and i don't know i'm not really sure how much to believe in that because i ended up being on none all year after finally realizing that you know as much as i thought Lamelo ball was a good pass style as much as i thought lebron was maybe a good one I ended up just running none and never ever even thought about pass styles being the being in the game ever again until someone else has trolled them and mine never trolled me. So I'm very hopeful that none is not the best pass style in the game this year, just for the fun factor of it. It's so stupid. I hope to never see that again. And I hope they did like play a little bit more, you know, balance to that. But anyway, moving along, any idea how much more pass styles? Yeah, yeah, we already know this, like went from seven to, to 14, as you can see. Now, once again, this was a really weird, like misinformation, like sort of deal. So Mike pretty much said in a different tweet that there was 150 more of quote unquote, the motion styles, because he was responding to someone's tweet about the motion styles. And he said, there's 150 more new like SIGs. And he didn't really say anything after that, but it was new signatures of them essentially. And long story short, everybody took that and ran with it and assumed there was 150 new dribble moves. So anyway. As you can see, he says, this is min misinfo. I, I said that there are 150 motion styles, not dribble animations. There are a lot more dribbles than that. And as you can see, this is where 2K got their reference from as far, or 2K Labs got their reference from, I should say. But anyway, moving along, we're here to talk about a little bit of adrenaline. So as you can see in this one, Uncle Demi's talking about the, un the adrenaline. This was almost like half a month ago at this point. So a little bit of old news per se, but anyway adrenaline boosts are back yada 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 like you know we all get what is going on with that so let's skip to the question yo at baluba are adrenaline boosts still not going to be affected until after you pass half court or could someone full court press me and i lose them in the back court you will still not lose adrenaline in the back court so you're still good on that with the 94 feet badge you're not you know expending someone's adrenaline on offense so just know when you're pressing people in general in this game you're not going to be forcing them to like burn adrenaline behind half court so nothing new with that now once again another piece of information as far as the adrenaline goes we have right here where again you can see he's responding to a completely unrelated tweet but this is where we start the topic right here hearing about all this offensive stuff but what about the what about the defense what will be considered a bump enough for offensive players to lose adrenaline riding their hip bumping them off course or a full body up now ironically he asked you know what about the defense right here but this is actually hand in hand an offensive question as well so any body up that's not considered a blow by win for the ball handler will lose you in adrenaline on offense so with that said let's come to the badges real quick 
So we have a couple of the playmaking ones between triple triple strike, speed booster, physical handles, blow by, and big driver that are more for the dribbling, etc. And then we also have touch passer and relay passer for the passing. So let's talk about the dribbling ones real quick because that was the whole topic of what we were just talking about. So we were talking about the whole, you know, adrenaline loss per se. And anything that's not considered a blow by win for an offensive player is then going to be a loss of adrenaline for them. So with blow by, quicker ball handlers receive boost in body up interactions with defenders when blow by is equipped. So I would assume not only are you doing this for the sake of actually winning the interaction, but not to mention it'll help you resist losing your adrenaline in that aspect as well. So blow by, very big deal. Not to mention physical handles is the physical version of blow by where it's during physical body up interactions. Players with physical handles will have a higher chance of winning the outcome following a dribble move. So. This is going to be for people with strength. This is going to be with people for speed. Uh, that's my interpretation on it. Both of them feature in the blow bys. It's just different aspects of the blow by, which one is more speed oriented, one is more power oriented, oriented. Speed booster is, as you can see, a perimeter only quick first step badge. Speed booster will allow for quicker launches when coming from the standstill dribble position and or dribble situation, I should say. And this is going to be big too in terms of like resisting losing your adrenaline because again, the, le the harder you are to bump, the harder you are to get hands on and get bodied up, the less adrenaline you're going to lose. And I'm not sure if you even lose adrenaline in dribbling period. Like if you do a super long, long run, right? And I'm telling you what guys, it here it sounds like it's way easier to keep your adrenaline in this year's game I think that means a lot of life for pick and roll because I really do believe adrenaline nerf pick and roll extremely hard in in last year's game because it's just a lot of just you know nerfing the left right movement and I understand that that's maybe a good thing in a lot of people's eyes and I would agree to an, to a certain extent as well but just from a general standpoint, like adrenaline isn't very important when it comes to ISO, if you ask me. I think it's very easy to not burn through your adrenaline. You got multiple different ways you can go rather than, you know, I mean, you could go two ways when it comes to pick and roll usage, but to use the screen, you have to move toward the screen, obviously, right? So I would just say, I believe that adrenaline being a little bit more forgiving is very helpful for pick and roll. And we'll see. Once again, like dealing with that bump and stuff too, I think it might be a little bit easier to bump people in ISO. It's just last year's game, it was still easy to bump them, but Clamp Breaker would help you just like kind of get right by that. Or for instance, to the stop and go mechanics. I'll be very intrigued to see if that is any different or not either. But anyway, triple strike, players excel with triple threat launches and jukes at a higher rate with triple threats, well, with triple strike. So this isn't really related to dribbling quite as much. I would say triple threat is a little bit more of a, kind of like, you know, sim nation sort of move. And hey, I am a big user of triple threat. So don't let me just, you know, treat that as like disrespect or anything like that. Long story short, I'm just saying triple threat transitions into dribbling. It's not actually dribbling because you're not putting the ball on the floor when you're doing a triple threat. So that's just yeah, I know, a stupid, stupid take. But anyway, moving along back to Twitter real quick. So into the next tweet, once again, this is me like bookmarking it because it was talking about passing styles once again. So about twice as many as last year from pro play so yada yada you know we got more pass styles we've already seen that twice uh, that's my apology <laughs> anyway moving along i really like steph and trey's dribble moves so i usually go to 92 we're, we're in response here to talking about the ball handle and speed with balls and stuff like that so what rating will unlock the top tier animations trey and steph 92 the highest unlock is steve francis's six size up at 95 and good to them obviously that was a very very like you know popular used sig size up in last year's game for a good reason too i didn't like it quite as much personally if i was ever on a small guard i liked a lot of the stuff to do with like trey young and uh let's say like even the ones that i personally liked on taller builds too but harden i like that a lot too for the sig size up but anyway regardless as you can see Stephen trey 92 steve francis 95 and that's good and once again i did tell you guys like this isn't really leak information or anything like that like as you can see, a lot of the SIGs, or a lot of the animations, period, are going to require a really high rating in this year's game. So, stay on the lookout for that, 100%. But anyway, moving along, what's your favorite thing about the new Pro Play, Pro Play feature? As you can see, he loves off how authentic jumpers are. If you love the NBA, you'll immediately notice. We also get animations from Pro, Pro Play that we wouldn't think to capture in mocaps. There are some really cool, unique shots, moves, and passes that change the gameplay for the better. So, just keep that in mind. When you're making your builds, when you're like, you know, testing out the dribbling, this pro play stuff is going to shake a lot of people's worlds, bro, including probably mine for that matter, too. I mean, I've been playing 2K at least semi competitively for probably 10 years now. Like I started this in 2K11. So obviously, but like when we're talking semi competitively, I mean, like around 2K14 is when they brought in the like park 
and actually playing PvP with my players for the most part. So I shouldn't say that because there was like the crew back in the day too. That's, that's how you know I'm a OG to this stuff if you know about the crew. But anyway, long story short, I, I would say like this is going to really be a very game altering type of gameplay uh, change in my opinion. But anyway, moving along. What are some of the things we should look out for as, so, as far as the dribbling goes? Try out different breakdown combos. There are a hundred to choose from. Sig Sig double crosses are are equipable now. So I'm not sure exactly what that means to be honest with you. Double crosses. So like I'm not sure if he means from a standstill point or like moving crossover per se. But either way, standing snatchback has changed and is now tied to the Sig setback package. So this is what I wanted to talk about earlier when I was talking about keep in mind the whole escapes versus uh, step back package. So. I'm intrigued by this. I don't know how that's gonna work. So in case you guys don't know, as far as what he's talking about with the snatchbacks, so if you do like, for instance, any pullback, at least that's what I'm pretty sure he's talking about. The standstill snatchbacks, to my knowledge, equals what I call a pullback, which is like, if you flick up on the right stick, then hold down on your left stick, you're gonna end up getting that pullback animation. Or even in, in some cases too, if you flick to your offhand, like if it's in your left hand and you flick to the right on your right stick, then down on the left stick, it'll do that pullback. To my interpretation, I believe he's talking about that, and he's saying that this, that's now tied to your SIG step back package. I apologize if that's mis misinformation by any means, but that's at least my interpretation on that. So I'm staying tuned for that for sure. He says definitely learn how to use the blowout proper, properly, branching generally way more responsive in 2K24. So again, it's a little bit hard to decipher exactly what that all means, and for me to speak with my chest on it and factually say that, but. I just wanted to at least put that in the video and talk about that information. So uh, this guy asks, are all animations going to be available at the start or will it be a seasonal thing again? Mike says, there will be some seasonal releases, but the vast majority of gameplay animations will be available on day one. 2K24 also features the largest year over year. I actually looked that up by the way, because I didn't know what the heck YOY means. Largest year over year SIG animation upgrade we've done in recent memory, thanks to ProPlay. So the main point of me bookmarking this tweet right here is to talk about the fact that yeah like he's saying there will still be some seasonal releases but the vast majority of gameplay animations will be available on day one to be fair the vast majority of gameplay animations were available on day one last year i mean the, the whole this word right here the vast majority <laughs> like that phrase is pretty subjective to use his words actually as an example so we'll see We'll have to see how many of these are actually in the game from day one. Ironically, if someone wants to test it bad enough, I don't know if that's me, to be real with you guys, but if someone wants to test it bad enough, we might actually be able to see because he actually showed us how many are going to be in the game in total. So we could, you know, subtract that number by how many are presently in the game from day one. Easy math, right? It's just, you have to do a little bit of time, time crunching on that. But anyway, that is all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to them, noties, all good stuff. And like always, try to 1,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put play in the comments, search parts my way through, or even pro play for that matter too, if you want. But I am very intrigued to see how that's gonna change the game. I think that's gonna affect dribbling the absolute most. I've been hearing that dribbling feels a lot like NBA Live in you know a lot of people's experience so far. I don't know if that's a good thing for a lot of people that like dribbling, but hey, for me, who doesn't really care about, you know, combo this, combo that, I'm cool with it, for sure, from a biased POV. But anyway, I just wanted to wrap things up and say I'm extremely excited to try and play a game that it's very likely going to feel extremely new and different from anything we've got out of 2K. And, you know, this pro play stuff definitely looks different. I mean, I saw a video of the Kevin Durant. Let's see if I can find it real quick. All right, so I don't know why I reacted to that and acted like I don't know the person who made this tweet personally. But <laughs> anyway, you can see this is from Joey, my boy. Uh, he showed, as you can see, 2K23 on the left, 2K24 on the right. Now, I want to break this down real quick, and this will be the last thing we do for the video. So as you can see, the, the animations, let's, let's pause them a little bit at the moment that it's doing it. So like, this is where he's starting the step back in 2K23, and this is where he's starting the step back in 2K24. Let's go back a little bit further, because as you can see, he starts the behind the back at nearly the exact same time as well. So in 23, it's a little bit quicker in my opinion and responsive. Now, as far as the dribbling animation, it played out pretty similarly like in terms of speed, but as you can see, he's transitioning into a dribble move much quicker. In this one, KD's doing a whole like head fake and like kind of, you know, like giving, giving some shoulder nod or anything like that too. Like, and in this, as you can see, 
once he did the animation, he's like not really bursting into the next move very quickly by any means. So as you can see, this one, he's already starting this, this hop back jumper by the time KD's getting out of the speed boost into this next one. So then in terms of that, as you can see, he's rising up for the shot in the exact same moment that KD's going for this step back right here. It just feels a little bit behind and slower is all I'm saying, you know? So all I'm saying is to keep that in mind is all, you know, cause I'm not here to hate on it by any means. I'm just saying it does seem a little bit slower is all. So just keep that in mind as a dribbler when you're making your builds. I'm just trying to look out for you guys and I wanted to at least show this. So anyway, that is all for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub if you do, turn on notice, all good stuff. And like always, try to 1,000 likes. And again, if you made it to the end of the video, put play or pro play in the comments, search for it through. Shout out to Joey too. Go ahead and follow him or sub to him as well. Joey2KYT. But anyway, that's all for the video. Hope you enjoyed. I'm that Tiggy's man. Peace.